believe it or not, it all started just outside this door. In the early 40s, this would have been, this was an army complex then, but Artillery Street run right up alongside it. And that's where we were brought up. And uh, that's where Jim McStuffy caught me out in the street. When young kids then, I think I'd been about 10 years of age, and he caught us with a fight. So the next thing was he had me by the ear, give me a lecture, got me up the next night, and up to Chichester Park, which was where the Holy Family started in the early 40s. That's how it all began. But I had what you call then a lazy eye, which was pretty bad. So I was ruled out of boxing then when I was about 19, 19 going 20. I had to stop boxing completely. But my trainers then would have been Jim Hall, Jim McStravy. They had seen me working with the kids and looking at handling, giving them a good hand with the boys. So they insisted then that I went into the coaching of the club. Things were pretty bad. I've always said Belfast was like one of them old westerns, a tumbling, tumbling weed. Nobody was moving about, nobody was walking about. But this club never closed. And the kids came from all over. They were coming in from the Shangle, from Tigers Bay, Gilna Hurt, New Lodge, West Belfast. They all came here and they all trained here together. It was the Education Authorities and the Sports Council, Ulster Sports Council, they came out and they asked me then that the, what they said then was they were making an exception because they were asking me to go into the, the cages in Long Case and train the UVF, the UDA, the Provincial ARA and the Official ARA. So I had to go up and see them because it was a strange, it was a strange request. But it was a true request that they, they wouldn't have any, they would have nothing to do with their PTIs in the prison. They wanted me, they wouldn't take any other coach. It had to be me or it wasn't on. That would have been the November, December in 1969. And what you're talking about there was, we did, we finished up as Club of the Century. And uh, part of it was the club, club of the Century, involved in that was the Club Show of the Century. And it was whenever we boxed uh, the paratroopers. We took up a challenge, I think it was Albert Hugh Pritchard one night in Bombridge, paratroopers were over. And at that stage they were Combined Forces champions. And uh, they wanted competition before they defended their title. So Albert said, well, there's one club in Belfast that'll give you all the competition you want. So they jumped at the chance they could, they didn't believe it. So they said to me, all the boys out of the one club. I said, yeah. And he says, you're willing to take on the, he says, burn the men who were telling me then they were the mate of the British Army, trained in Aldershot and were ready for this. I said, well, it's all right. So they eventually, they did take it. The date would have been maybe, I think it was December 69. Boxed them downstairs, boxed them here in Iraqi and the parties were whitewashed, Tendo. So, and they had their Olympic reps and different ones on that team, some of their high class internationals, and our boys were in terrific form that night. They stayed in our home. Bell looked after him over the weekend. And, but when Pat brought him in, Pat wanted him to be a boxer like Jerry Hamill. So I had to say to Pat, Pat, Jerry Hamill, there's only one Jerry Hamill, and uh, there's only going to be one Barry McGuigan. So what we'll do there is we'll work on body work for body. So that's when we started developing his left hook to the body. And uh, what we done then was he was boxing in a Chroma Star, he boxed in the Shangle. And believe me, that's where the supporters club started from. It all happened then. We had both sides coming together. In them social clubs, that was hard to believe, right through the troubles. All the celebrities, all the film stars, they, they were there in force. So terrific, it was, a, it was a great thing. And as I said before, my late wife, Belle, she wasn't able to travel with me that time, which was a, a big blow. My daughter, Jacqueline, she traveled with me that time. But Belle watched it all on the TV, and Marvin Hagler, they flew Marvin in to present, along with Barry McGuigan. Morgan Freeman was the, he would keep to the show that night. He had just done the Million Dollar Baby. He'd just made that movie. So, it was a big plus, and Bell got a big kick out of me winning that. You know, being nominated to be the first Irish man nominated for it was a big, it was a big plus. But for the great and eventually win the award, it was, it was a great feeling, and I was very happy for her because it made her, when I came home, she she was delighted with the with that achievement. And we've had some great champions. Yes, we had, 
you know, with the Hamels, the Russells, the Stories, the Webbs. I think now there's about 19 national champions. Uh, all in all, there's well over the 100 champions take all, taken all in. There's well over 100, like we're talking about senior at senior level. And uh, sometimes they say, how do you, how do you keep going? Here we are now, and this year alone, with Olympic bronze medalist, with a European gold medalist, with, an, with the youth world silver medalist, and for the first time we have our Olympic gold medal winner, and Ram Burnett. Paddy Barnes was his gold European Commonwealth and Commonwealth Championships, Commonwealth Games, Olympic bronze. To me, any kid that gets in onto the ropes and gets into the corner, it takes a lot of guts and it takes a lot of heart to do that. The big thing in here is Paradise Row. You see what's right along here. And when these guys come back 40, 50 years of age, they still want to see their photo up on Paradise Row. And that's a terrific achievement for them. And that is their ambition. So we tell them that their main target has got to be the Olympic dream. We've had six individual kids coming in here who've hit the Olympic dream. We think that's terrific.